What's up guys, we got such a positive response on our last 7 things I wish I knew before I started lifting video that we figured we'd fire up part 2. If you guys haven't checked that out, first link in the description down below. These are 7 things that if you're a new lifter or even experienced lifter you'll take that I wish I knew, the mistakes I made, mistakes Kyle's made, let's dive into it. Tip number one guys is always trying to be shredded when you start working out. So a lot of people start, most often you're going to be skinnier, you're going to have abs, just a skinny guy kind of ab look, which is good if that's the thing you want, but if you want to get bigger, the lean bulk will only take you so far. You have a short time where you can really utilize those new gains where your body is just being whacked with everything with consistent strength training, consistent nutrition, that you can really yield amazing results that you'll never be able to mimic in your lifting journey. So that's why we really recommend taking advantage of those first six months. Make sure you're steady gaining weight because chances are you're going to put on a lot more muscle than someone like me who's been lifting for however long at this point where it's going to be a lot slower of a process and I'm not going to be able to yield those results. Don't get stuck in that mindset that you always need to be shredded because if you're not really putting on weight, you're only going to gain a small amount of muscle. But in that time, you can get away with putting some more on. Build up your frame, get big. Spend a year or two building your frame, figuring it out, maturing your muscle, and then hop into those shreds. Okay guys, and common mistake number two is looking for magic foods. I'm very guilty of this. I used to think, honestly, if I ate broccoli, tilapia, brown rice, chicken, and stuff like that, I would become shredded, I'd be able to lose weight, but I ended up just going in circles. And I find so many people are still asking me this question, like, dude, what do you eat to get shredded? It's like, I mean, for actual body composition, it's whatever fits my macros, obviously, General health is something that's extremely important to us, so we just we don't go out and just eat Twinkies and brownies and stuff all day, but at the end of the day, what truly matters, guys, is calories in versus calories out. Make sure you're counting your macros, um, and that's truly what will help you guys get to the next level, and a lot of beginners just get so stuck because they think that they need to be eating all of this healthy food to help them reach their goals. They end up binging, um, and they're not even counting their macros or don't even know how many calories they're intaking. I remember back in the day, it's funny, you guys are going to laugh, but there was actually a New Year's party that I went to, and I thought I was like, you know, going to reach my goals and just become so much better by bringing a thing of broccoli, tilapia, and brown rice there. Um, and in reality, it just it didn't make me happy. Like I wasn't able to reach my goals. Like I was missing out on a lot of life and stuff like that. So I highly recommend just following a flexible dieting approach, not thinking there are foods that are going to actually make you become shredded or more muscular or stronger like that. Um, making sure that you're putting a big focus on actually living life and not missing out on any opportunities like your friends, um, you know, wedding or birthday parties or anything like that, and just enjoying the entire process that this fitness journey has to offer you. Tip number three guys, and this is one I cannot stress enough, we all have that buddy who's been working out for six years and he's looked the same the whole time. Nothing against them, I guess it's better than looking worse. But a lot of people, if you go to the gym or in your fitness journey, if you take it on with no goal, it's very hard to know if you're actually making progress. By setting tangible goals, crushing them and resetting them is how you're going to create the best results. Set a weight goal, set a physique goal, set a measurement goal. I always recommend measuring yourself. Oh, you want an inch bigger arms? Try to get there and you gotta figure out the things you gotta do to get you there. Whereas if you have no goal, it's very easy to skip the gym, skip out, not be disappointing yourself for doing that and running in circles, right? And the big issue with that is, once again, I'm sure every gym has a buddy who, he's cutting one week and he's bulking the next. There's always back forth, back forth, and you're really, you're just jumping around, and by trying to catch every, all the chickens, you're not catching any chickens, as they say, right? Focus on one thing, attack it, attack it with sheer drive and consistency, and you'll smash it and then you can keep crushing those goals. That's what I did. Started around 180 and I ended up bulking up to about 225 and I just kept tacking it, kept tacking strength goals along the way and I really feel that that foundation, combining this with number one, is what got me where I am today. Okay, this is a huge tip and this is something that might be slightly confusing but I'm gonna break it down as best I can. So you guys need to think of a fitness journey in a thematic sense. So it's all time, spans of time. It's not day by day. Don't take it that way. I find if it's day by day, you're going to have more issues. I like to think in weeks because if you take it day by day, a lot of people are going to have the mistake where if one day you have a bad day or a social event and you do indulge maybe in an extra piece of pie over your current macros and you go, oh crap, I killed it. I'm done. I'm going to gain a million pounds, whatever. I screwed up my day, it's all over, whatever, and you just kill it that day. 
right? It's just one bad day. And then before you know it, that bad day could be 3,000 calories over your maintenance, right? Which is gonna completely detract two weeks of work into a diet. So you can't think of it that way. Instead, if you think of it by the week, you say, okay, I went a little bit over, maybe I can substitute by taking out that pie through the rest of the week. That's one option, that's a more strict option. If you're competing or something, or you're really into a big deficit, into a weight loss, you might have to do that. But if you're just more, if you have more general goals, sometimes it's important to also know when to fight your battles. I don't recommend doing this all the time, and this should be something done sparingly, but there are times where, like uh, the other night, I was pretty close to my macros, and my friend said, do you wanna go out and get a couple wings and some fries? And I thought really long and hard, I said, okay, I haven't gone over my macros in a month or so, is it worth it for me to go out and do this and maybe be four or five days behind in my diet from overindulging with some wings? And I thought the social time, how much I really wanted the wings, I felt really fatigued in my diet, and I didn't mind setting myself behind five or so days, and that's okay. As long as you have the mental realization, I can't go out and eat these wings and fries and think maybe tomorrow I'll wake up lighter. You have to know that when you step on that scale, you're gonna see and you're gonna have to make up for that, which is fine, but sometimes, you just gotta deal with it, right? And say, I'm a bit behind, but it's gonna help me move forward. I'm gonna have some mental clarity and I accept that loss. So it's very important to have that distinction and not completely just tank days for the heck of it. And when you do, make sure it's controlled, make sure it's tracked so you can see the damage you've done. For the next tip, guys, if you're liking this video, please smash that like button, drop a comment down below. It really helps us out. It lets us know if you guys are liking it, if you want more of these videos. Also, drop a comment down below what your biggest mistake is, even if you did one in the last video. If you have another one, let us know. Uh, we're more than happy to keep learning. I'm sure everyone else will be. We just want it to be a place for it's a fountain of knowledge, right? All right, so next is just not working weak spots from the start, lifting like a bro, hitting chest, Monday, buys Tuesday, arms Wednesday, chest Thursday, rinse and repeat. Don't do that. Your body wants to be symmetrical. Really hammer those legs, especially when you get started. I can't stress. Leg and back work is critical. Those are huge, powerful muscles of the body, and if you get those big and strong, it'll help with everything else. The chest and the thighs are some small muscles in comparison to everything else. You're gonna have a lot of problems if you focus on those, and it's gonna look unproportional, you're gonna look weird, and you're gonna lose respect. Contrary as well, you guys wanna make sure that you're not just only working back and chest and the obvious things. You wanna do things like rear delts. This small thing, if you're not hitting them, will actually cause you to hunch forward and you get the stringer bro hunch, as I like to call it. It's very common to see, you know, they got a big juicy shoulders, but there's nothing back there. Hit the rear delts hard, hit the calves hard, the places where a lot of people like myself and Kyle, even who are later on, we're trying to make up for. If you start strong with that, people will see you, even if you're not a huge dude, and they'll go, wow, your symmetry is on point, you look great. And that's an easy way to get ahead from the get-go. Number six, guys, consistency will always win. A lot of you guys commented on our latest video saying this, and I could not agree more. So thanks for all of you who commented that. But I know so many people who just think going to the gym, like they're like, hey, man, how many times do you go to the gym per week? And sometimes it's five, sometimes it's six. But even if I say, you know, maybe I've only gone four times, they kind of think, well, I've gone six. Why am I not looking as good as you? Or why am I not seeing results like you? Guys, let's keep in mind, someone that goes to the gym three times per week and gives it 100% will always see more results than someone who goes six times per week and is only giving it 60% because they're um, not able to recover as much or they're not giving it as much as the person who's just giving it their absolute all when they go into the gym. Guys, you've got to be consistent. You've got to do it on a weekly. Like Josh already said, it's got to be weekly, monthly, yearly. Like we've been working out for so long and I just know so many people who, you know, will have like a spurt of one or two months where they go in the gym, they work out, they stop and they just like go in circles. They never make progress. So guys, be consistent. And last but not least guys, watch every single Colossus Fitness video. Once you have, comment down below. I swear you guys will be jacked. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with a friend and we'll see you in the next video.